Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Uh, Keegan here, uh, just wanted to check in and you know, we've been getting a good chunk of the orders coming through on the Etsy link for the uh, five and then two kilowatt um, diesel heaters. And so obviously with that, there is gonna be a ton of questions on, you know, how do you put it together, uh, things of the sort. I did actually put together um, kind of these instruction packets that ship with the parts kind of talking about you know how things fit and it does a pretty good job of just kind of you know giving you a brief overview but i wanted to go a little further in depth and so that's the point of this video and so this isn't going to be like a fun you know uh video for youtube for entertainment this is purely for those people that picked up the kits and were looking for kind of a step-by-step -step instructions on how to put the kit together so this is specific to the five kilowatt and really the kind of simple uh, new way I am building these diesel heater units. And so uh, follow along. And if you've got any further questions, feel free to reach out on Instagram. That's Keegan Builds. Uh, and then, or you can reach out on the Etsy store. Same thing, Keegan Builds on Etsy. Um, or, you know, here, YouTube, feel free to leave a uh, comment below. So appreciate everyone for uh, you know, any of the orders coming through on Etsy, like it's just awesome to see that taking off. Um, and feel free to reach out at any point if you need help with anything. So here's the rest of the video and follow along. Thanks everyone. All right, step one, we're gonna grab some sort of small hole punch. Uh, a nail would probably work as well. And we're just gonna tap this pin out. Okay, once the pin is roughly about here, you can grab some pliers. And just pull it out. Okay, next step, um, take the sticker off. Well, you do that. But what we're gonna do is we are gonna chop away this, 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 and this, so that our intake can sit flush. All right, so you're just gonna use a plastic Dremel bit and we are going to be cutting away those fins that I just showed you. And what you can see here is the aftermath, which obviously looks pretty terrible, <laughs> but don't worry. It's going to get all covered up um, with the grate. You can also use a, a little chisel to, to really get in there and uh, kind of flush things up. Um, make sure that you've got everything kind of cleared out of this area here in the little valley. Um, but yeah, so once all that's done, um, you'll be able to kind of test fit your your vent and see just how that's going to fit into there. Um, don't cut any holes yet. We're going to also measure with the uh, little plug adapter as well. Um, should look something like this. Okay, so on now, I guess this would be the right side of the case. We're going to trim off a couple of those little tabs as well. You can see here I've got uh, these ones right here cleared out. Um, and what this is going to be for is the, uh, the heat output tube, so the, the black aluminum tube that you get off eBay. You can go ahead and slide it in there and get a feel for what that looks like. I typically also trim off this one up here too. Um, I didn't in this case, but I, I would probably do it. Next step is uh, just place these on here. Grab a Sharpie and mark the holes that need to be drilled. Next, grab the piece. This goes on the inside, but the, the whole pattern lines up. So what you can do is just take this and just add a couple of screws to kind of hold it in pl place. 
And then what we're gonna do is um, take your Sharpie and we're gonna trace the holes that we're gonna be cutting out. Same with this one on the back. And it's okay if it's a little a little wobbly. We're gonna make the hole a little bit bigger on this one. Next we're gonna get a two inch hole saw. This is from Milwaukee. And what we're doing is we're drilling out so that we have enough space for all of this to be free on the case. So basically, basically drilling a hole that will allow for bolts to go through here and be un unobstructed on the other side. Since we've already marked it, we can just take our two inch saw, hole saw and put our hole in. So. Well, I'm gonna put the camera down. And I would be careful, this really does like to grab. So, if you don't have a steady hand and it gets crooked, that's when it grabs. Um, so, be careful. And the next hole, two holes we're gonna do is with the three inch hole saw. So that's gonna be here and here. And the easiest way I've found to do it is to kind of place it between your legs on the ground so that it's stable and you can drill straight down onto it with the battery kind of resting against your your leg. So nice and slow uh, and very uh, perpendicular to the box level. It's gonna be hot so be careful. And this is roughly what you what you end up with. Doesn't have to look pretty because it will all be covered. Um, what I like to do though is take a razor and just run it around the edge, kind of get some of the strings off there, so that when we put our adapter plates on, it's all flush, nothing's sticking out. Similarly, when looking to drill the holes for the, um, the through hole, um, kind of put it on here. In this one, I actually do one bolt at a time. So I marked the one hole, I drilled it, then I put a screw in. I marked the next hole, drilled it, put a screw in. And I'm gonna mark the last hole uh, and then drill it and put a screw in. Again, the point of this is so that you can really make sure that these three holes are lined up. Um, you don't want to have a mismatched hole there. Um, so yeah. Since my Sharpie isn't long enough, I'm going to use this longer uh, pencil to go in there and then trace a circle. Now we know exactly where to drill out for the uh, exhaust pipe itself. And I'm just going to use uh, the two inch hole saw again. And similar to everything else, we're gonna just put our piece here, mark our holes. Um, again, I'd shave this uh, piece up here if you can. Uh, might make your life a little easier. And then drill it out. Once you've got the four bolts in, some washers. These are the bolts that came with the actual output tube. And then I just added some, some washers on there. Uh, then we can go ahead and make sure things look lined up and we're going to trace our inner hole. Then we come back to our trusty three inch hole. We've got our traced mark and we'll be cutting right here. All right, once you've got those holes drilled and everything's all cleaned up on the inside, um, that's that's it for the really the, the big holes. Um, we'll have just a couple more up here for the fuel pump and the fuel tank, but um, pretty much ready to start mounting things. Okay, so the screws for the fan 
are the next step. They're countersunk on the back side so that they sit flush here. So go ahead and just put the screws in and then you can screw the fan to it. All right, and no need to really torque it down. Um, the screw holes are pretty good. Uh, you will notice though, uh, some of the fans say the airflow direction uh, right on the back. So you know that you want it blowing in so that when it's in the case, when it's in the case, I have the wire kind of shooting off the side right here because it's going to go to our power inlet and it looks something like that. Next step is to get the power plug mounted. I like this orientation because then when it's on the side of the case, it can just flip down. Also makes the release button easily engaged with your thumb. It's a very tight fit. Uh, comes with little lock washers and I also put some uh, thread locker on the, the threads. So, yep. All right. These are mounted on here. And like I said before, uh, easy to just uh, unplug that with one hand and then the thumb release on the plug. Super easy to engage and disengage. For the mounting plate, go ahead and pop it on here. And looking straight down, we're going to want to see where the edge of the heater is and draw a line. because that's where we're going to make our bend. Now, once you have your line on there, uh, you can go ahead and use a, an angle grinder if you've got one, and just give it a quick score. You can do it on the inside. And then what you can do is place it into a vice grip and give it a bend, and then slowly, with a hammer, go across the edge until you've got a good 90 degrees. I'll go ahead and fix this little bow here. Once you've got it all mounted up on here, you can take a look at how much you're actually going to need, which is basically from here over, and the rest of this can get cut off. Go ahead and mark that. So I'm going to take my cutter wheel and just chop that off. If you've got tin snips, uh, that'll cut it too. That's what I ended up doing. After cleaning it up with uh, a little file, rounding the edges, this is what we're left with. Nice, clean, and then 90 degrees here, which will mount right in the case. Okay, so the next step, obviously the inside uh, connection piece is too long, so you want to just mark it. Give yourself a little margin of space uh, for flexibility in the pipe, which will help with the lining. Uh, just because, you know, if it's a little high, then you'll want to be able to flex the pipe down a little. So once it's cut, something like this, you can obviously see the height difference, and this will be able to fit in there like such. Um, we'll use a connection piece here. Okay, once you've got the tube on for the interior, this piece is on here. You can slide the heater in this side first, and then pivot the whole thing down. I'm gonna try and film this and do it at the same time. I'm gonna get that side down first. You can kind of compress the left side a little bit and then you'll have it just sit right in there. And now everything is in place. Once you got it in here, go ahead and place the outer 
heat output tube on. Insert your four bolts. You'll need to supply some washers, but these are the bolts that came with the output tubes. And using some blue medium strength thread locker on these nuts. Um, get it tightened down and then everything should feel really solid. Okay, um, now you will have needed to purchase some of the name brand exhaust piping. The heater kits come with this exhaust tube, but you cannot cut this to length. The inner diameter gets smaller at the ribs, so this will not work. Uh, you gotta buy the name brand stuff on the exhaust. Um, go ahead and put it in here, give it a bend, find out roughly where you're gonna need it to end, and mark it, and we're gonna cut it there. Okay, so once you've got your exhaust cut to length, you'll want to go ahead and put two notches in your exhaust on both sides. And then I went to the hardware store and I got better clamps. The ones that ship in the kit are kind of weak and tend to strip out. Um, I got a box of these from Harbor Freight, um, you know, for like five bucks, so and grab some gloves and the exhaust or the muffler tailpipe sealer um, make sure it's nice and mixed up go ahead and squeeze out some and what you're going to be doing is we're going to take this and we're going to spread it on the outside of the exhaust output in the through hole and then we'll slide the pipe on Okay, that is coated nice and good, nice and good. And we can, also for spreading it on here, it's easy to just take the bolts out and spin it. Um, so go ahead and let this sit um, like such, and you can slide the exhaust on. Once you got, um, the pipe on the one side, go ahead and slide a fitting of uh, heat tape. Um, when you put it on, start on one end and push push from the back. Don't try to pull it on, it just gets tighter as you pull. Push it on and it'll want to open up as you push from the back side and you should be able to slide it right on. Don't forget to put the pipe clamp on, and we can now slide the exhaust pipe, or the uh, through hole, on. Once you've got everything cinched up, and you'll want to do this pretty quick so that the exhaust sealant doesn't dry up on you. Um, but yeah, it should look something like this. Got everything kind of sealed in here. Screws are all tight. Everything looks clean. Good to go. It's now time to hook up the intakes. You'll have this big long piece. We're only going to need a little bit of it, so go ahead and just stick it on there and then get a rough idea of what it's going to need and then you can cut off the excess. Now this is all I'm going to need and this is just a kind of foil covered cardboard so scissors or a knife will cut this really easily. For the mount, I'm just using some standard kind of 3M uh, Extreme Outdoor double-sided sticky tape. You can get this at Home Depot. Um, or they, the part does have a mounting hole, so if you just want to do a screw on the bottom, um, you can do that as well. All right, so I've already mounted the, and I'm, I'm just using the uh, ones that come with the kit. This isn't too critical of a piece that needs to be cinched down like the exhaust system. So um, these ones are fine to just put on there, you know, somewhat tight, not too much. This side on the intake is tight. This side is loose for now. And we're gonna go ahead and kind of flex it on. It's gonna sit something like that. I've peeled the tape off this and what I'm going to do is 
uh, without sticking it to the wall yet, I'm gonna try and slide it in there and then uh, by compressing this just slightly. Okay, make sure everything's lined up before you stick it on. And then just go ahead and you're going to pull it to the wall. Make sure the part sticks on there pretty good. And then you can go ahead and slide the collar down and get it get it tightened up. Just a quick tip on these guys. I think the Phillips screwdrivers and flyhead screwdrivers are just a pain in the neck to deal with. So I just use uh, one of these little sockets on a screwdriver. Little guys here are six millimeter socket heads. Um, these will depend on what you, you pick up, but I think they're eight mil. Um, so just whatever you pick, pick up. Okay, once that's on there nice and tight, should feel solid and not going anywhere. We are pretty much almost complete. I think we just have left to mount two screws or two bolts down here and then we'll be good and done with the heater portion. Next step is to drill two holes. I've got a metal lock washer down here acting as more of a um, heat barrier also. In case the plate gets a little hot we got a little bit of air movement on that. Um, and then just a couple of uh, bolts through there. And the heater is now completely mounted to the case, super solid. All right, so we should have some extra hardware from the heat output flange, these little metal guys here, because each side came with four bolts. We're gonna use three of the bolts to mount our fuel tank. So go ahead and grab a drill bit. I'm using a 15 64ths. And we're gonna go ahead and drill out the plastic. I've already done that, so you can see. And then we'll grab some washers and mark it up. At this point, you can close the case up and we're going to take the fuel tank. I like to mount it this orientation because you can read the 10 liters. We're going to place it flat on the ground and center it to the middle of the case. The reason I like to put it flat on the ground is so that when it's full of fuel, that fuel's sitting on the ground and providing stability to the case instead of having it up and causing the case to want to lean. Grab your Sharpie and mark the holes. Now this next step is optional, but the fuel uh, uptake little thing can be just mounted and you can just roll that way, no fuel filter, or you can run one of these kind of um, end of line, kind of inside the tank chainsaw fuel filters, which I have linked. And they essentially um, squish into the hole, but you do need to drill the hole out. So find a drill bit that is slightly smaller than these, and then uh, start you know going up in, in drill bit sizes. I'm rolling with a five thirty seconds to start. Um, maybe a nine sixty fourths might work better for you. All of these little filters are slightly changed, so play around with that. And I'm just gonna put it in the vise gently and drill out the center. And here's an old photo of me originally doing that. Obviously this one looks a little bigger, but they're all the same thing. Okay, so for me, it ended up being the 11 64th drill bit. Um, and I'm only going down right in the neck here. I'm not going all the way through because it gets thin up here. But now we've got an inline fuel filter. 
All right, so now is time where you want to kind of envision where you want that fuel line to come through. So I'd like mine to come through. It's going to be this nipple. So I want it to come through and clear the case. Um, but I also want to make sure that it's on the flat part, not the curve of the fuel tank. So right about there. Okay, go ahead and you'll notice, measure twice, cut once. I didn't like where the first one sat, so I'm gonna go with the second one. And uh, I just double checked before actually drilling the hole. Um, but now we're good to go. So I'm using a 9 30 seconds drill bit, which is just slightly smaller than the threads. That way I can uh, kind of thread it in and make sure it's a nice and tight fit. All right, the hole's drilled. You'll notice a little bit of plastic on the inside. If you can, get a razor and try to clean that up because we want to be able to make a nice clean seal. Okay, now that it's all cleaned up, I'm just gonna test fit it. And then I'm gonna screw it in and essentially make some threads on here. And then back it out. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna utilize some of the wire that we cut earlier that is still on the floor. And we're going to place it inside and tape this up and we're going to feed it through the neck and out the hole. Also, um, don't forget to put the o-ring on first. If you've got some needle nose like this, it's going to make your life a whole lot easier when trying to fish the line through this little tiny hole. Let's see if you've got a hold of it. Drop it. <laughs> Dang it. I find that it's easiest to grab if you can just get just this very edge or very tip to hang right at this hole and grab just that. That's probably the easiest to get it through. Uh, but at this point, uh, you're just going to go ahead and feed it through very carefully. Like in my instance, I didn't actually tape it. So I really don't want to drop it. But you can go ahead and thread it through those threads that you did. I'm going to do two hands. And again, by doing it like this, it makes it so that it's not going to just drop through on you. But uh, still, be careful. And when it comes to tightening, I like to, I don't want to crush it, but I like to grab hold of here and then use a, a little wrench down here. And just like that, we've got our uptake with the fuel filter mounted on a low part of the tank. And we can go ahead and remount the fuel tank back on the case. Okay, we're looking at the bottom of the case. I really like where this is sitting. It's gonna give me enough room to slide the hose on, and then I'm just gonna drill a small hole straight through there that the fuel line can run through. Now you can see what I'm doing here. I want that fuel line to sit right in there. So now I'm gonna use 11 actually this is an 11 64th drill bit and that is going to be just big enough to squeeze fuel line through the outer case for a nice clean look okay so that's our hole and 
what it looks like when you run the fuel line through is it comes out the other side right here and it's going to go right up to our fuel pump for a super clean look go ahead and get your fuel line on and give yourself some excess fuel line so that you can feed it through and shorten it up to the right size later and depending on how big of a clamp you use you might need to modify the wings here um, I had to cut mine out a little bit uh, just because I use some bigger clamps than, I, than what ship with the kit um, up to you I just really didn't want any fuel leaks to happen so I'll show you what it looks like when it's done Okay, so now you can see what I'm talking about, and easily accessible if you need to hop in there, tighten things, or loosen things. Okay, next you're going to want to put your bolts back in, and I put a little dab of Loctite on there. Make sure the fuel line is pulled through and is not twisted up or kinked in any way. And then uh, just go ahead and set it on the ground and make sure everything feels level. Okay, everything looks to be sitting flush. Good on the bottom. Lined up on the top. Looks great. Next step is to grab the fuel pump. And you're going to go ahead and place it in just like this. and then zip tie it up. Okay, you can see I've marked for the mount holes and for the fuel pump holes. I basically centered on, on these bolts and I kept them close to the bolts so that they don't bump into the heater unit when it's a closed case. So kind of keeping them lower will prevent that. Now for the thermostat mount, I'm using these tiny little metric M2 bolts. Um, in the link below, I have a kit of all the bolts that I've been using. This was in there, I think, but uh, double check. But it just barely fits and it's flush. That's the key, you want it to be flush so that it's not protruding out when you put the thermostat on. All right, those are mounted up, flush. I'm using these tiny, tiny little nylon locking nuts, which are probably the cutest little things I've ever seen. <laughs> and yeah, fuel pump is mounted. Go ahead, snip off the extra. Boom. On to the wiring. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and snip a good chunk of this and shorten it all up. It's just way too much wire. Like I said, way too much wire. So we've got our 12 volt negative, which is the black one, 12 volt positive, which is the red one. And then you've got two pieces one looks like this it's going to be our fuel pump connection and the other looks like this which is uh, the thermostat controls um, which for anyone that's wondering is a five volt positive five volt negative and a communication wire if you want to get a good idea of what you're going to need go ahead and plug the heater plug in, then you can judge how much to cut. Once it's plugged in, I kind of like, I like to tuck it back kind of underneath here. And then I know, okay, um, you know, going to need roughly this much for the negative and this much for the positive. You're also able to snip the connection off of the fan. Uh, since this is a 12 volt fan, you can also roughly place it here it's going to go on the same plugs 
And what I'm doing is using these little helper hands. Um, and I've got both wires going right in and just soldering it to the connections. Um, closest to me, so or closest to the fan, is going to be the negative, which is labeled 2 on the plug. Alright, both the positive and negatives are on. Let's go ahead and slide the shrink wrap over and get that taken care of. Okay, both of our positive and negative lines are soldered and good to go. So we've got power in to the heater and to our 12 volt fan. Okay, I went ahead and snipped off the extra length here. And I've plugged in the fuel pump wire. So what I'll do now is I will add the fuel lines so that we can get a good idea how much line we want for the uh, wiring. Okay, so we've got the fuel line run and it goes underneath and wraps around there. So we've got the fuel pump wire. What I'm going to do is zip tie it around down to about here and shorten it up. All right, zip tied up, follows the fuel line. Now you've got two options here. You can either fold this all up, zip tie it, and tuck it out of the way. That's the easy way. Or if you are OCD like me, I'm gonna snip and solder this, get rid of all the extra slack, and just make it look clean. Okay, that is snipped. Now I'm just going to solder these together and shorten it up. Similarly, I don't need this plug. It's one more thing that can fail. So I'm going to snip it here for the thermostat and snip the wires here, shorten that up, get it all cleaned up. Okay, once all of those lines are soldered up, it's time to tidy everything up with a couple of zip ties before we are done. Okay, so last step in the build process is to drill out some holes down here. I got one more set here. What that does is as the fan forces air in, it exits out these two sides over here near the exhaust, so got a constant flow running through. And then um, also the intake for the combustion process steals a good chunk of that air. But other than that, this is good to go. Can go ahead and close it up. And a good rule of thumb is since the fuel tank lid has a vent, always make sure to keep your your case and the tank facing upwards. So. Um, a good way to do that is uh, just kind of close close the lid with basically fold the case up um, yeah but all good to go Alright, so let me go ahead and plug it in. Power's up. And what we need to do is prime our fuel line. So, OK and down button at the same time. And then up. And this will take a few. Click the 
down button and go ahead and unplug the power. And now what we can do is test fire. Okay, go ahead and you're gonna plug your power line in, 12 volts, and then you're gonna hit the power button. And then it's gonna take about four to five minutes for everything to get going. So it'll kind of warm up. You'll know it's got power though, because the fan is on here. All right, so firing it up the first time, you'll notice um, smoke coming off the exhaust tape. Totally normal, it's just getting broken in. You can either, two ways to run it, you can either have it in Hertz mode, or in temperature mode. Temperature mode, you set the temp. But since this is in here in the case, um, it you know obviously won't recognize temperatures outside the case, which is why I run it in Hertz mode. Three is a pretty good temp for a tent. You know, but basically you're setting the speed of the fuel pump. It's going to be the power button in the middle, not the up or the down here, uh, but the power button there in the middle on the right. And you'll want to let it go ahead and power down. It takes about five minutes to cool down. Don't ever just unplug it because that's what can set these things up. So you want to let it do its full shutdown process.